there's another thing that I really appreciate about this culture other than the puzzles is the need, well, the lack of need to make everything over elaborate. For example, the altar room. Yeah, there's a jewel in the middle, but you go up a bunch of stone stairs to a stone altar with a little bit of graffiti on the wall. No need to make it like super out there, just simple, nice and clean. The doors are ornate, but they don't like get in your way. Anyway, we can move to the right to get to the next part faster, but I like consistency, so we're gonna keep going left. Reaching the side of the well with the entry door to this entire well, what we entered in the beginning of the game. And this side is a lot brighter. Alright, let's take a look at what we're dealing with. Well, there's six little tubes. I'm not sure what those are. There's a really flat shark. There's a three by three grid of, I don't knows. And then, I get a really bad feeling from that puzzle. I don't know why. There's some notches on the left and front wall, and there's a scroll in the lower right. doubles as a wind tunnel. Some notches. Looks like a bunch of abacus values. And then trap door. Okay, so I guess I can move these tiles. Whoa! <laughs> really, really fast. I get the feeling that these are supposed to turn slower, but my processor is way too fast and the game was encoded to, they both lit up the same color. Okay, and they're the same value. I don't know what's going on, and I know I can turn these either left or right, but it doesn't really matter because everything's moving way too fast. No matter how the square be turned, its perfect rank and order can never be disturbed. Be it known to you, within the square of Gange de Ray, eight equal sums shall you find each way. For once, the oracle is actually really direct here. We need eight equal sums, and it looks like we're not allowed to repeat numbers. I'm guessing that's what the little highlighting is for, to tell you, uh-oh, you have a repeat here. All right, well, let's get to our chalkboard and figure this out. So, as according to the oracle's direction, which thankfully was surprisingly clear this time, we need to find eight equal sums in every direction. And we have eight directions. We have horizontal, which gives us three horizontals. Um, we have three verticals, and then we have two diagonals. Just a quick aside, uh, this direction horizontal is the same as this direction horizontal because addition order doesn't really matter. Actually, no, it doesn't matter at all. So, our first goal should be to find out what exactly is this sum that we should be looking for? We're just told we need eight equal sums, but we're not told what that sum is. And we can't repeat numbers, otherwise we could just fill this whole thing with threes and be, sorry, with ones, and be done with it, because then the sum would be three. But we're not allowed to do that. We have to use each number once. So, we know we have to use each number once. And that means there's one sum we do know. We know the sum of all the numbers from 1 to 9. We know we're going to be using them all, so we can add them all up ourselves. We can either do this the that way, or we can do this the nerdy way. I don't really 
explain this too clearly. This is the definition of the summation from the numbers 1 to n, where n is the n number. So in this case, 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 plus 6 plus 7 plus 8 plus 9. Um, and would be 9, and then you plug that in and you get your answer, the summation. Uh, knowing the summation formula is completely irrelevant. I just used it because it was simpler for me. All you need to really do is get the summation of all the numbers 1 to 9, and you can do that any which method you choose. In this case, we have 9 numbers, so this would be 9 times 10 over 2. That would be 90 over 2, which would be... 45. So, the, num the sum of all the numbers from 1 to 9 is 45, but we're not looking for all 9 numbers, we're looking for just 3 of those 9. And we have 3, let's start with, let's just look at the rows right now. We have 3 rows, each of them have to add up to some value, and then 3 of that value must then become 45. So if we think of it like that, we can think of this entire section plus this entire section plus this entire section must all add up to 45. And this section has to equal this section, which has to equal this section. So all three rows have to be the same. So if we add up all the rows, the sum of every row, we have to get 245. And we know the rows are going to be the same. So we can just represent them all by the same letter, the same variable, which means we can do some more math. And that means the sum of each individual row must be 15. This might be a little bit confusing, basically, to go over it again. I chose rows, where you could use columns as well, not diagonals, uh, because diagonals don't hit every single uh, part of the grid. They miss these four here, and then they hit this one twice. But you can either use rows or columns and say, OK, the total sum of all the numbers is going to be 45. And we know that every row has to be equal and we know they all add up together to be 45. So we, we essentially do a little bit of algebra with that number, with that number 45, that's our key. Um, we do some algebra with it to determine that our final sum for every row, every column, and therefore every diagonal is going to be 15. There is one more quick thing I wanted to add. A good friend of mine came up with the same goal number, goal summation using a very, very different technique. I don't know how well this is supposed to work or why it works, so I'm only showing it for the sake of completeness. Um, what he did was he added the lowest values you can take and then the highest values you can take. So the lowest and smallest sum you can possibly have is 6, and then the highest sum you could possibly have is 24. So. Yes, 24. So, what's the middle number between those? That would be 15. That's because from 6 to 15, you have 9. And then from 15 to 24, you also have 9. So it's right there in the middle. Not sure how exactly that ended up being the right answer. <laughs> Not sure exactly what's going on here. I think it has probably to do with the fact that since everything's equal, everything's converging on a medium, but I mean normally you don't want to use something unless you can prove why it works, but this is a puzzle, not a thesis, so this technique seems to work just fine for solving this puzzle, or at least the first part of it. We have our sum for every row, column, and diagonal. Next step is going to be to find out where the numbers are actually going to be placed. So, we have eight sums, so let's build just eight um, sums, just with the numbers that we know we have, one through nine. 
we can't repeat numbers and we have to use only the numbers 1 through 9 and we can only use three of them. So for example, 9 plus what plus what? So I probably want to use the highest value and then over here I'm probably going to use the lowest value. I'm just trying to figure out what all the sums are going to be so it's kind of a little bit of just going through everything. That's 10 plus we need a 5. That gives us 15. So that is our first sum for 15. Let's keep going. We take 1 from the 5 and then we add it to the 1 on the right and we get 9 plus 4 plus 2. That's our second sum. We should have at least 8 sums because we need 8 unique sums to, f to fill in that grid over there. So let's keep going. 9 plus 3 plus 3 we can't do because we're not allowed to repeat numbers. And if we do 9 plus 2 plus 4, that's the same as 9 plus 4 plus 2. So we're starting to repeat now. Um, let's go down to 8. So 8 plus what plus what? Well, um, if I take one away from here, I can add one to here. So this is 8 plus 6 and then keep the 1. That gives us 15 as well. Let's do what we did up here. 8 plus 5 plus 2. 8 plus 4 plus 3. If we do it again, we're going to start looping. So let's not worry about that. We'll do 3, 4, um, then we'll do 2, 5, and 1, 6, which will just be inverses of these. And then we'll go down another number. So, 7 plus what plus 1 gives us 15. 7 plus uh, 1 is 8. 8 plus what gives us 15. That would be so Oh, can't do that. We'd have to repeat numbers if we wanted a 1 there. So, we'll stick a 2 there instead. And then stick a 6 here. So, now we have basically 7 plus 8 is 15. Let's keep going. 7 plus 5 plus 3 is 15, 7 plus 4 plus 4, and then we repeat, 7 plus 3 plus 5, and then we repeat again. So we have one more sum to look for. So let's go down another number and find out what that missing sum is. That is a horribly drawn 6. 6 plus what plus what? Well, we can't do a 1 over here, or can we? If we do a 1 over here, then that gives us 6 plus 1 is 7, or that we need to get an 8. Oh, wait, we're repeating 8 plus 6 plus 1 down here. All right, um, let's check first to see before, because we know we need at least 8 sums. So there has to be some combination we haven't used here yet. So we did 1, let's try with 2. So 6 plus 2 is 8, and 7, that gives us 6 plus 7 plus 2. 7, 6, 2, that's the same problem we had before. So let's do, hmm, let's do, if we do 3, we'll have two 6s. So if we do 4, that would be 5. Have we done 6 plus 2? No, we haven't. Another indicator was that those are the ones used the number 7, 8, and 9, which we already went through over here, whereas this one just uses numbers we haven't gone down and on the primary, our primary side where we decided to keep constant while we try to go through the rest of them. So those are our eight sums. Now we need to fit them into the grid. Where do they go? The first thing to notice is that certain numbers appear a certain number of times in these sums and certain parts of the grid can be used with a certain number of sums. So an edge can only be used with two sums, the column it's in and the row it's in. A corner is used with three sums, the column, row, and diagonal. And then the middle is special. It's used with four unique sums. So let's start with the middle because there's only going to be one number that's used in all four of these sums. Well, one number used in four of the eight sums, I should say. Let's see what number stands out. Technically, if you want to, you could write like a list of 
This is how many times nine appears. This is how many times eight appears. But I'm going to eyeball this. So number five appears four times. So we know for a fact that five must go into the middle. So now what's next? We need, let's fill in from this way around. So we need a number that's part of three sums. Once again, this is where we're making a list of um, how many times each number appears would help, but I'm just going to eyeball it. Um, eight appears three times. I'm going to use a different color for this. So, eight can go into here, which means that one of the, that means that this diagonal, this row, and this column must be part of one of these three sums. And we know that there's only one sum that uses eight and five, so we know that this must be two. That completes this sum here. Now, 8 plus 4 plus 3 can either go here or it can go here. What do we want to do? Well, remember we can't just put 8 plus 4 plus 3. We have to take into account where other numbers will be. So, let's think of another corner. Let's try to do the corners first because they appear in three different sums. Well, another corner that we notice, and I'm choosing this corner because it's part of a sum we already have, so we can fill it in. I'm running out of colors again. Is the number six. Six is part of three sums, so it must go in a corner. The question is, which corner should it go into? Well, let's see, if it goes into this corner up here, or in this corner, it's still part of the same sums. So let's just stick it here. All right, two plus what plus six gets us 15. Well, let's look at our sums here. Um, can we do that? Can we actually do that? So two plus six is eight, and then we wanna to get to 15. So we need seven. So seven is part of here. We can use seven. Now that we've put 7 in, we know that this, we now know 7 plus 5 plus what gives us 15. We have that sum here. That's 3. Let me actually fill this in as well as 276, 276. Check off the ones that we're doing. 6 plus what plus 8 gives us 15. Okay, so 6 plus 8 is what's going to be 1. That fulfills this one here. 6 plus 1 plus 8. So now we just have two more numbers to fill in. We can just do, go through with these columns. 9 plus 5 plus 1. And then 2 plus 9 plus what? 8 plus 3 plus what? And 6 plus 5 plus what? Gives us... 15, that's going to be 4. So, let's do a quick check and make sure that we didn't make a mistake. This is 9 plus 6, that's 15. This is going to be 14, 15. This is going to be 11, 15 rows. 11, 15. Then this is going to be 8 and 7, 15. 9 and 6, that is 15, and then diagonals, 8, 5, 13, 15, 9, uh, 15. So, this is our solution. We are done. But wait a minute. This is not the only solution. Is there an easy way we can get the rest of them? Yes, there is. I'm just going to show a few, and then you can probably deduce the rest. We can 
Actually, this ties in, funnily enough, to one of the things the Oracle mentioned about no matter how way it's no matter how it's turned, its rank and file should not be changed. So if we rotate this, um, then this is a square, technically a square matrix, and so we can um, rotate it and the sums would be the same. If we rotate it this way, then we end up with, let's see if I can do this right. Okay, 2, 9, 4. So this row becomes this column. And if that row becomes that column, then that means that 2, 9, 4, 4, 3, 8. Continue on here. 5 remains unchanged. It's in the middle. Uh, so 4, 3, 8, 8, 1, 6. And then 6, 7, 2. And this fulfills the requirements as well. Let's see. 14, 15. Yeah, they're the same sums. They're just orientated differently. You could rotate this um, two more times, and that would give you four. That would give you a total of four solutions. Or you can take this or one of these and mirror it so that you have two, seven, six, four, three, eight. Um, mirror it, and then from that get more four more rotations. Get four more unique. Solutions you can either rotate it horizontally or vertically, it doesn't matter. So, for the purposes of solving the puzzle, I'm going to use this solution and I'm going to try to maintain my cool while battling against the stones that turn way too bloody fast. All right, we can do this. Make this a two. Okay, that was quick, that was easy. I make this a nine. One off, one off. Come on, come on. Just one little turn. Damn. It's way too sensitive. Come on. Ooh. Come on. Okay, there we go. Alright, we just need to move. Okay, we need to move this to become a four. And no, okay, this needs to be a three. This needs, come on, wait, come on. We're running, we're running. No, I don't. There we go. Now we just need to. Okay, no, this needs to be a four. And I just need to spin. Okay, there we go. And now I just need to spin this guy until I get to a seven. Come on, big money, big money. <laughs> okay, come on, come on, come on, come on, big money, big money, big money. Uh, uh, <laughs> okay, there we go. Alright, so I just need to move this to make an eight. Just come on, just okay, no, 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 I have a one in nine chance of getting an eight. Just just release randomly and hopefully I'll get an eight. Nate. I get Nate. Nate. Nick, come on. This needs to be a five. A five in the middle. Okay, come on. I'm almost there. You, you, you almost got it. Just it, 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 there we go. Give this no let's try again for an eight. No, I'm pushing this to an eight. Come on! Come on, big money, big money, big money. This isn't the wheel of fortune. This shouldn't be the wheel of fortune, but it is. This is what happens when you don't code your game to take advantage of the fact that it should have a consistent speed and you just move as fast as the processor can take you. Come on, I'm almost there, I'm almost there, I'm almost six. I had a six, I had a six, and I missed it. I missed the six. And have, okay, there we go, there's a six again. Okay, um, so we need to move this to, to move, the, move, move this to get an eight. Do you see an eight? We just need, we just need an eight. We just need an eight. Come on.
And once again, we always exit from the same door, so our jewel room is always on the same side. And after that annoying puzzle, I just want to get this jewel in the well. Come on, hurry up, hurry up. Run, 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 run. There we go. The tasks resolved so far marked here are five. 